friends, welcome back after a long period of pause to another video in Microsoft Flight Simulator. As most of you might know, I was on vacation for almost four weeks and haven't posted a video. And this is the first one I'm posting after vacation. And I am really excited about this one. I decided to pull the trigger on the PMDG Douglas DC-6 and for the next maybe 5, 6, even 7 tutorials I don't know the number yet we will be looking into this aircraft uh, this has a lot of um, functions, buttons, panels, switches and pretty much manual aircraft so there is a lot of ground to cover therefore we will be going slow I have watched a lot of videos about DC-6 but none of them explains what button does what people tend to use the artificial flight engineer most of the time which we will use in tomorrow's live stream but I'd like to go through the button switches and I have a paper checklist that I found on flightsim.to which I will share with you guys and after that we'll be probably able to start this thing on our own so today's video we will be looking into the cockpit this is sort of a cockpit familiar familiarization video we will go through each uh, panel starting with the overhead from left to right top to bottom and try to talk about all the buttons and switches as far as I learned just a quick disclaimer I am still not an expert on this airplane I have some knowledge but I'm not quite where I want to be so therefore some of the information I am providing might be a little, a little off or um, incomplete or maybe even wrong so please take these with a pinch of salt and do your own research do your own study and try to learn as well while you are here please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn on the notifications it helps a lot and you will get a notification when i post a new video all right so without further ado let's jump into the cockpit and start looking at the panels in the cockpit wrong button all right we are in the cockpit we will do top to bottom um, and we will we will start with the left eyebrow overhead panel this guy here and we will talk about what these buttons are uh, this is the cockpit temperature normal is normal if you want it warmer this is how you uh, adjust it you can use your mouse's scroll wheel or you can click and move your mouse which will move the switch a little bit faster this is the white cockpit floodlight it's um, daylight right now if I advance the time and make it a little bit darker maybe we will be able to see the lighting uh, although for that I need to provide power to the aircraft uh, let's do that first let's get the power and now we should be able to see the light as you see this is the white light this is the radio backlighting which lights up the buttons of the radios let me turn them on and you will see these uh, physical buttons change if I roll this down and that what this button does um, this is the fire detection tests when you click it sounds a warning and then completes the tests like so and when you do this there is a button that lights up um, red in red color which right there as you go through the each test um, the the red button lights up for fire 
warning. Alright, so let me fix the wheel. So these are all the fire detection tests. And over here we have the carbon dioxide discharge. This is left and right bottle selector for carbon dioxide to ex extinguish the fire if we have any fire on, on board. Um, this is the discharge for This is the other carbon dioxide discharge for cabin and tail. Over here, we have the cabin heater fuses. Let me change the time again to daylight so that we don't need to worry about the flashlight. Cabin heater, tail heater, this is the de-icing system. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the heating system. Left wing, right wing heat. Uh, degrees uh, of the left and right wing in Celsius. This is the cabin and tail heater fuel pressure. It heats up with fuel and this is the left and right wing fuel pressure uh, for that heater. So this is the left eyebrow panel. Let's switch to the middle overhead where we have all the fuel quantities over here. These are the alternate tanks. These are the main tanks. Alright, so this is the fuel selector switch where you display the quantity for main and reset the quantity for main and alternate tanks, not display. Over here, this is the pitot heat for uh, the pitot tubes, wing and scoop, belly scoop, captain's pitot, first officer's pitot, cabin heater, so on and so forth. So this is the switch to turn the heaters on and off, the pitot heats. You turn this on when you are about to take off, otherwise you will melt the pitot, tu melt the pitot tubes. Uh, this is the amps for the heater, anti-icing fuel tank, uh, level display, oil engine oil display, auxiliary oil display. Um, these are all oil tanks. Uh, this is the oils for the right engines, left engines, uh, hydraulic reservoir levels. This is the water level when you inject water for all four engines uh, to, to squeeze more power out of those engines which we will speak about. And then over here we have the oil temp, temperature and oil pressure gauges. Over here landing lights. These are the cowl flaps. Uh, cowl flaps are, if I switch to the left engines, will oh, I think the wing wheel will show us. Cowl flaps are these things uh, behind the engines. They open and close to retain heat in the engine. So when you are up high, you need to, you have to close the cowl flaps to keep the engines warm enough so that they run properly. So that's what that is. Uh, let's go back. These are the engine supercharger controls. When you pass 16,000 feet, the air is so thin and the engines cannot suck up enough air to burn the fuel and you lose power after 16,000. So if you want to keep climbing, you will switch the supercharger controls from low to high so that they suck in more air to burn the fuel. This is due to air being thin when you climb high uh, about 16,000. So that's what that does. We have three radios. You can also have a GPS in the middle instead of an ADF. I selected or opted that out and wanted to keep this aircraft retro. And this, the option is on the EFP. Uh, at the options page you can select the avionics from there. So this is all about the middle overhead panel. From here we will go to the overhead panel which is above here and talk about this. This is the emergency prop de-icer, guarded switches, uh, auxiliary oil tank selector. We don't usually touch these. Uh, you can transfer oil to the auxiliary tank, oil tanks, if uh, to the oil tanks from the auxiliary oil tank if you are low on oil or if something happens, I believe. I haven't researched that that much yet. This is the red lighting uh, for the cockpit, nothing more. Prop the icer, emitter selector switch. There, are, that's that. 
uh, water injection pumps this is when you turn this is what you turn on to inject water uh, for takeoff about 87,000 pounds of gross weight or takeoff weight uh, about 87,000 you don't get enough uh, power to speed up and take off so you have to inject water to squeeze more power out of the engines which we will talk when we get to that uh, that tutorial that part of the tutorial so this is the engine spark advanced switches uh, these are guarded and you can turn them on or off oil dilution for four engines and then the circuit breakers for different things like main fuel booster pumps uh, if they are tripped they will be like this and you have to switch it to the on okay so that's the top part there is a placard here for the weight and takeoff speeds uh, these are weight in gross weight in pounds starting with 70 tons 75 80 85 so on and so forth and then these are the v1 speeds v2 and vs okay and then these are the flap settings for different approach speeds uh, and the v refs so on and so forth down below entrance lights of the cabin uh, floodlight of the main j box not sure what that is i have to check it out uh, emergency lights and no smoking lights which you arm by this seat belt signs position lights these are the wing tip lights which are green and red you can turn them to steady and they also flash because this aircraft does not have a strobe so maybe you just turn it to flash uh, when you are up in the air that's what this does and then this is the beacon this is the upper instrument switch the uh, switch and instrument panel lights this is the red light this is the main instrument panel lights which is down below here that turns white lights on and this is the magnetic compass light which is this thing right here over here the fuel booster pumps for the engines and also the alternate fuel booster pumps if these fail uh, inverters in, that inverts AC power, DC power to AC power engine instruments normal standby this is the voltage regulator overheat warning lamp, lamp. Uh, upper switch and instrument panel uh, lights which is the right side of the same thing so left and right that's the dimmer this is the uh, cabin attendant call and mechanic mechanic call switches this is the engine starter we will talk about this when we get there and this is the starter selector for which engine you want to start this is the light at, uh, of the wheel wells uh, outside for the mechanics to check the wheel wells and during night takeoffs uh, this is the battery switch you can turn on plane battery or ground power which we are on ground power right now uh, emergency instrument and power instrument lighting so this is emergency lighting as you see uh, it is crazy loud uh, this is the battery power ground power like main master battery switch yeah and then these are the engine generators for four engines these are the magnetos for the propel propelled engines or radial engines this is the automatic patterning test which we will look into these are the engine feather uh, unfeather switches so when you have a problem with an engine like fire or if you lose one of the engines you can feather it so that it doesn't create drag uh, this is the engine instruments panel lighting which is right here it's the red light the white was up there uh, somewhere here rack right here so, oops wrong switch uh, let's turn that down auxiliary blower and then these are the emergency exit lights you turn them on in the event of a crash so that's the overhead panel completed 
from here let's go to the right overhead eyebrow panel over here we have the cabin pressure settings uh, or pressurization panel here uh, so this is cabin pressure cooling turbine uh, switch cabin pressure controller so you have a flight pressure controller and when you change the uh, flight level in feet so this is 10,000 it will automatically adjust the cabin pressure for you so this is what it is not sure if there is a reset for this thing to swing it back to normal but I believe there is not over here this is the um, vertical speed uh, gauge up and down uh, times thousand so that's what it is over here you have the cabin temperature control in, uh, in Fahrenheit and that's the displayed cabin temperature so I usually keep it around 72 over here is the electrical panel uh, these are the generators and this is showing DC amps generated by the engine generators this is the voltmeter selector switch there you can select the engine instruments G-phase, captain's instruments, so on and so forth and this is AC, this is DC voltmeter, this is measuring the bus or individual engine generators if you will so that's the left eyebrow panel so from here let's go all the way to the left and start with the maybe EFB and take a look at that a little bit so EFB can be folded like that or you can drag and move, bring it up so this is the EFB over here that's your uh, nose wheel steering this is the captain's map light and captain's instrument lighting on the EFB you have a ramp manager where you can remove or uh, place wheel chocks, pedo covers tow bar and tractor which is the pretty much uh, tug for pushback engine oil pans I believe these old engines the radial engines drip oil so there are pans to catch that mechanic stands for the mechanics to go out and check the engines like so and these are the engine oil pans right there uh, I think when they are steady they drip oil so that's that's my guess over here this is the doors front cabin door front cabin stairs cargo doors main cabin exit which is on the other side of the aircraft if we scroll around right there this is this exit if I can get it like this maybe we can just do a cockpit or cabin view too it's a little bit too sensitive right now because I'm trying to do it with the keyboard but the cabin is also modeled so that's what this is um, let's swing around and put the wheel back to where it was sort of all right so that's the uh, ramp manager fuel load manager you can change the fuel that is in the aircraft if you click to this top it will load the entire tanks to the full capacity all the tanks uh, alternates and main tanks uh, if you click down it will empty the tanks if you hover over and scroll with your mouse you will be able to add thousand increments if you hover over to these arrows it will be hundred increments and in, if you click the arrows it will be tens so that's how you change your fuel same is true for the passengers well you can load all the 60 passengers or zero passengers you scroll you get give, it gives you tens you click it gives you ones and same is true for over here I believe let's do this if you scroll over here it will give you a uh, times of 17 for some odd reason same goes for the cargo if you hover over and scroll it gives you a random number uh, tie uh, one two three times 23 28 clicking down below sets it to zero clicking the buttons will increment in tens scrolling will do 
it in hundreds. So that's how you adjust the cargo. Augmented flight engineer, this guy will do the checklist for you. So because this aircraft doesn't have a computerized flight management computer, FMC or MCDU like Airbuses and Boeings, this is the replacement, a human replacement for that. It makes things easier when you are learning, so I highly suggest you use this guy uh, just to familiarize yourself with the plane. Maintenance manager, these are the engine statuses. When they turn to yellow or red, you can repair them. Propellers, you can service the props. You can top up the engine oil, water, alcohol. This is the water injection into the cylinders to squeeze more power. That tank, you can fill it up. Auxiliary oil, you can fill, top it up. And the anti-ice fluid for the de-icer system, which is, I believe, on the left overhead pa panel. Uh, we skipped this part, I realized. So yes, this is the de-icing panel. So this is the cabin heater master which is a guarded switch uh, that changes the cabin heat, heater fuel, cross feed, so normal system, this is the heater fuel uh, for the different heaters like cabin, left wing, right wing, uh, tail, so on and so forth. Ignition selectors for the fuel heaters, uh, single or normal, like so. So this is the uh, fuel one, fuel two, I believe this is tail, left wing, right wing, cabin, tail again, left wing, right wing. Prop the icer and then carburetor the icer for the carburetors and the radial engines. So sorry about that, we skipped that part so I realized and we came back here. That is why we stopped for a second. Okay, maintenance manager is what that does. Engine stress visualizer, this is visualizing the engine stress when you are up in the air. If it's green, that's all good. Uh, X means engines are not running. Yellow is moderate stress range, which is acceptable. Orange, red is bad for your engines. And then this also shows that the cylinder heat temperature, head temperature is cold and uh, it is in the icing range if it turns to this uh, dark blue-ish color. So that's the EFB. From there, let's go to the pilot's view and take a look at the instruments and what we have here. Airspeed indicator, attitude indicator, altitude indicator. This is the ADF. Uh, I think I would say course deviation indicator. Oh, this is not a CDI, this is the ADF, uh, gauge, clock, you name it. Uh, this, is the this is the bank and turn display. Um, this is the course deviation indicator for nav radios. This is the vertical speed indicator. Down below, this is your uh, VOR1 and VOR2 needles. This is again for ADF uh, to set the heading. This is to set the course for your uh, VOR and this is the this is the heading uh, I believe this is this uh, this is the comp the compass sorry over here we have a DME display that displays the distance from a VOR DME station this is just the clock you can set the clock to the local time if you want to and this is the transponder one and two this this aircraft has two transponders one over here and one at the co-pilot side this is your transponder you turn it to standby like this you set the squawk code uh, from here and then when you are ready to take off or taxi uh, you turn it to on and altitude reporting okay this is the intercom and um, speakers for nav radios to detect the DME signal VOR1 signals uh, microphone ADF uh, signals and then COM channels or COM1 COM2 or both for the radios so that's the audio panel sort of okay 
So that is the captain's instruments. When we go to the middle row, these are the. Let me zoom back a little bit. At the top, these are your fire warnings for four engines, heater compartment, aft uh, baggage, hydraulic compart hydraulic access compartment, left hydraulic cylinder, I believe, so on and so forth. So these are the fire uh, warnings with lights. This entire section here is your engine instruments for four engines uh bmep we'll discuss this and what that means i don't want to dive in that rate right now for the four engines one two three four from left to right this is the fuel pressure gauges for the four engines one two and three four manifold pressure for the four engines this looks like there is only two gauges in fact this has two as you see the numbers here this is engine two and four and behind this needle there's another one marked as with the engine one and engine three over here this is the fuel flow gauge, same logic, two needles each, uh, two gauges for four engines. This is the engine RPM switches which has the same logic, two needles uh, for left wing and right wing engines, one, two, three, four. This is the flap position gauge uh, that displays the position of the flap. Uh, cylinder head temperature, cylinder head temperature for engine one, two, three, four. Uh, this is the water pressure for the water injection system. Uh, one, two, and three, four. Each engine has its own. This is the outside air temperature in Celsius. Right now it's around 22 degrees Celsius or close to 75 Fahrenheit. Uh, this is the fuel pressure gauges for the four engines. Oil pressure gauge for four engines. Oil temperature and carburetor air temperature uh, as this gets cold you need to turn the carburetor heat uh, so on and so forth let's jump to the first officer side this is the first officer's instruments and then we have three green lights for the landing gear lever down below this is the dme uh, display and this is the second transponder which you can also turn to standby uh, this is the engine fuel and oil pressure warning isolation switches. We will talk about these. They need to stay at the on position. You don't turn these off, but it's it's one of the items on the checklist. Over here, the first officer area has his own light controls. And then oxygen flow in indicator for the oxygen. Uh, cockpit to cockpit windshield exhaust air underfloor so the the windshield or the windscreen is heated by the exhaust uh, in this aircraft this is the hydraulic system pressure this is the emergency air brakes and the pressure of the air brakes let's see if there is anything over here no not really so we will move to the throttle quadrant these are the uh, fuel selector, uh, alternate tanks or main tanks to turn them on and off. So, as you see here, there is a placard, main tank on, uh, alternate tanks are on, uh, like so. And then, if we move down, selector, and then finally, this is the off position. So it has three positions. This is obviously your throttle. Uh, this is limiting the middle engines or any of the engines uh, this, this limits the throttle this is the throttle lock this locks the throttle at the current position uh, this is the prop lever uh, down below oops wrong button again let me scroll back a little bit okay uh, if I move the throttles up this is the volume switches they are not, not operational at the moment uh, panel lights and so on and so forth so none of this stuff works this is the gyro pilot sort of an early version of an autopilot which we will look into when we get to up in the air uh, this is the antenna ADF uh, I think this is the uh, I believe this is the ADF antennas or two ADF radios. Uh, this is also not operational. 
down below we have more in-up stuff here um, this is the marker beacon uh, VHF radios, HF radio and radio panels are here this is this is part of the gyro pilot which we will talk over here these are your mixture controls auto lean or auto rich so the mixture control is auto in this aircraft this is the mixture lock this is the auto play uh, auto pilot or gyro pilot uh, engager clutch because this thing is mechanical there are, there are no electronics um, landing gear switch down below aileron trim and this is the carburetor air called to hot to heat up the air coming into the carburetors if there are icing conditions and this is the flap lever all right if we go um, down this is the fuel dump controls that you can dump the fuel for the engine tanks one two three four all right so that's that over here we have the hydraulic pump selector valve which powers the brake system general system or accumulate the pressure so this is the hydraulic emergency if we go to our emergency hydraulic pump selector valve this usually stays stays at the brake system uh, we don't touch it okay so let's go to this wheel I think this is the pedestal uh, I'm thinking is there anything left well, let's move to the captain's view. Light instruments power failure. I'm not sure why this light lighted up, so I haven't went through the checklist before turning on the power. That might be the reason. Other than that, I think the only thing left is the circuit breakers back here. Um, at the back of the cockpit. Right here, these are all the circuit breakers for different uh, circuits of the aircraft. All right, I think this is the emergency exit hatch, and that is about it for the cockpit layout of this aircraft. The windows, uh, you can open them. You unlock and then slide it out. Both windows do open captains and first officers and this changes how the sound is uh, coming from the engines oh one thing I forgot this is the parking brake and this is the gust uh, gust lock or something that locks the uh, the yoke or limits its movement so that's that's what it is I think when you have turbulent air you just put it on I have to look it up too I haven't did a lot of research on that all right so that is all about the cockpit of this aircraft guys it's been a long video i know i tried to keep it to 30 minutes we just passed uh, a little over 30 minutes but i think it's fine uh next video we will look at the startup procedure from cold and dark to ready to start the engines and we will discuss what we need to do to get this uh started and for the tutorial we'll do it two different ways one we will use the artificial flight engineer I don't know if the artificial is uh, the correct word uh, and we will do it ourselves with the checklist I hope you guys enjoyed the video I tried to give as much as detail I possibly can with my knowledge I will still keep learning about this aircraft the uh, user manual or the instruction book is 300 pages long and it has a lot of information that will take some time for me to digest at least uh, in fact quite some time for me to uh, digest so next as I said we will start the engine we will bring the her up to engine start uh, or ready to start the engines phase from cold and dark uh, we will also in this tutorial series take a look at the VOR navigation how to plan a flight from VOR to VOR using this Douglas DC-6 and how to navigate without the modern flight instruments like a GPS or FMC or MCDU in, in the Airbus aircraft. We will look into climb, cruise, descent. It has different checklist items for those phases of the flight. 
we can do a landing, we'll probably do a localizer uh, landing or VOR yeah, localizer oh, and this plane can do an ILS landing, so we'll do ILS too alright, this is it, if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up, it helps a lot and uh, be on the look for the next episode of this tutorial series with the PMDG Douglas DC-6. Thanks for being here, joining with me in this video. Thanks for watching, and I will be seeing you in the next video.